Hey, I want to make a video about table saws and splitters related to safety. So I bought this table saw quite a while back. This is kind of restored. I like to restore old tools. And I purchased this in Colorado from a woodworker who actually has a YouTube channel, which I can link below. One day in my thread, it came up and I was like, hey, that's the guy I bought my table saw from. But anyway, so I got this table saw used. It's fantastic, an older Delta table saw. But one of the issues with it was there was no splitter or riving knife. So the main difference between a splitter and a riving knife is a riving knife looks kind of like a shark fin. And as the blade rises and lowers, the riving knife ra raises and lowers with it as well. And it comes right over the top of the blade. So it offers quite a bit more protection than the splitter here. So what's the reason for each one of these? Basically, as you're ripping stock along your fence here, your piece of wood can get caught on the back end of the blade as it's spinning and shoot it right out of the <coughs> table saw like a bullet and it can be very dangerous. So when you got that riving knife right over the top of the blade, then that's going to prevent that from happening or binding. So they are now required in the manufacture of table saws, but this is an older table saw so it doesn't have a riving knife. It also doesn't even have an option to attach a riving knife. But there is a place on the inside of the table saw here to attach this, <clears throat> this splitter. And so this is a homemade splitter I made and attached there. Um, and so the disadvantage of this splitter is one, it's not going to raise and lower with the blade. And two, it's quite, a, quite far back from where the blade is. So before, you have <clears throat> before it even engages, you have to push your stock quite a ways through as opposed to the riving knife. So that brings me to my point with safety is I heard lately that you should never use a ta table saw without a riving knife. Now I'm going to have to disagree with that. Here's the main reason. There are a number of safe cuts that you can make on a table saw without a riving knife. First off, you can use one of these. This is a crosscut sled. So if you're going to use your crosscut sled, your riving knife really isn't doing you a whole lot for safety. So this is one reason you could, one way you can use an older table saw if you need to use. You also have your miter gauges here, where you can make quite a few precise cuts um, without your fence, and you can safely operate this without a riving knife or even a splitter. But if you are going to be making more traditional cuts on your table saw using your fence, in which case a riving knife or a splitter is going to give you added safety, it probably is true that certain cuts with smaller pieces that a riving knife would help you with, you probably don't want to make. Um, but you can still cut larger pieces of wood, heavier pieces of wood, uh, larger stock, just fine with the splitter um, in place. So. If you've got a table saw, it doesn't have a riving knife, doesn't mean you can't use it, it just means that there's a trade-off. And I don't mean trade-off for safety, I mean trade-off for use cases. So with that older table saw, it still comes in handy for quite a bit of work, probably 90% of the things that you can do without the riving knife. Uh, so don't toss it to the dustbin. Uh, make sure you at least, at the very least, have a splitter and these older table saws can be refurbished, restored, and still put to use.